Hello, my name is Jonathan Green and welcome to my doll room. Uh, for those of you who've been here before, you may notice that I do not have the usual display of dolls to talk about. And you may also notice if you look down below that for me at least, this is a relatively short program. And the reason this is a relatively short program is that we are discussing one of the very rarest Katie Cruza dolls there is. The Doll 15, or the Sternschnuppchen. Try saying that three times fast. Um, Sternschnuppchen means the shooting star, sometimes translated as the falling star. And it has a sister doll that is the Sternblumchen, or the small star flower. Um, these dolls are extremely hard to find because they were intended as a doll for a toddler. And it's not that they were made for a particularly short period of time. They were on the price list from 1932 to 1935. They are hard to find because they were played with and loved to pieces. The tear sheet, which introduced the doll, reads as follows. Either of flesh-colored, soft green, or soft blue trico, stuffed with kapok. Colored coverings show dirt less, with a starflower wreath naked. Or of soft pink trico fabric and a long, light-colored wall dress. Or as an angel with a silver shirt. The face is washable. Intended as a throw doll for a toddler, it is completely soft and cuddly. Rather serious and comical in expression, it will appeal to older girls as well. Now, the original cost price or wholesale price on these dolls were for the naked doll with a wreath, six marks for the angel doll in the silver shirt, seven marks 50, and for the doll in the long dress, nine marks. Now, to put this into some context, the next cheapest doll on the price list is 12 marks 50 for the doll seven, which had been discontinued and they were trying to get rid of those dolls. And then the Doll 10 was 14 marks 50. So these dolls were considerably cheaper than the rest of the doll line. For 40 centimeters tall or 16 inches high. Um, the dolls had a mask face. Um, on the case of the dolls that were the doll one face, it was in fact the mask face found on a doll one. Um, the dolls later on were found with the Giacomo head, the head that was used primarily on the Hompelchen dolls. It's often very difficult to tell the two of these apart, sort of out of context. Uh, the Giacomo head is rounder, the doll one head is more oval, but um, it can be very confusing as to which head was used. The faces were painted with oil paint, same as the usual dolls. Um, the majority of the dolls had painted hair. At least one sample has survived of a doll with human hair sewn between the mask and the back head covering. Now, this cloth back of the head um, is worth noting. Um, it would be intended to be a bonnet or cap. Um, it would have been in colored fabric if the body of the doll was the soft green, soft blue, sometimes red was used, or um, soft pink fabric. If the doll was dressed, then there was a cloth bonnet that matched the dress, but that too was sewn into the seam between the uh, mask and the back of the head and was not removable. So it's not uncommon to find, well, not uncommon. You never find these dolls. But um, when you do find these dolls, occasionally 
they will have the bonnet in place, but the dress is missing. Now, the other two versions of this doll are worth talking about. Um, it says it's sold naked, meaning that it was just a colored cloth body with a wreath of star flowers. Now, these dolls would have had cloth covered cardboard wings sewn to the back of the doll. Um, this is also true of the dolls that were sold as angels with um, the silver shirt. Now, the silver shirt fabric was that really flimsy tinsel gauze fabric that is sometimes used on um, fancy dress costumes of the cotton sateen quality, and uh, very unlikely any of those survived because it was so fragile. Now, the price list of 1935 also offers retailers the option of buying the wings and a silver star in order to decorate the dolls at Christmas time and make them more Christmassy. Um, so that was another option for the dolls. Now, some of you may be thinking, ah, that sounds a lot like a cuddle cubie. Well, there are certainly similarities here, but there's no reason to believe that at any point Katie Cruza had seen a cuddle cubie. Um, also, while there are very superficial similarities, the body construction and the entire feel of the doll is somewhat different. Now, there's a sister doll to this called the Stern Blümchen, or the Small Starflower, which is essentially the same doll, but instead of a light-colored wall dress, um, the dress was brightly colored floral fabrics. Um, these, of course, would have been more of a spring-summer item for the stores, and um, they're quite bright and festive. Um, these are very hard to find, and it's interesting that when you're reading up about these dolls, you will see the same two dolls in the Sonnenberg Toy Museum shown over and over and over again. But these dolls were made approximately 1932 to 1945. Um, but in 1952, the VEB Bad Cousin Company reintroduced these dolls. Now, ignore the Kate Cruz at the top of this header. Kate Cruz had been gone for um, two years. They were still using the stationery. And in fact, shortly after this letter was written, someone went through with a black pen and simply crossed out her name on every single sheet of stationery. And well into the late 50s, they were still using Katie Cruz's stationery with her name crossed out. Anyway, um, this letter um, indicates that they were reintroducing this doll. They had found or received a shipment of Trico fabric. Now, what's interesting is this letter says that a company of this letter would have been a sample of the doll and a countersign for selling the dolls. Now, this doll pictured is one of the few dolls that I can pretty confidently say is a VEB doll. It has the fire engine red lips. Um, the eye painting is consistent with the East German production. But I have to say, part of me wonders that these pristine condition dolls that show up um, if they aren't actually from this period, um, which would make sense. Because it seems like that the company made samples, sent them out to retailers, and either there were very little response to this or the could not get the fabric again or something, because these dolls do not show up. And one of the things about the VEB company is um, they churned out dolls by the hundreds. I mean, at one point in the 1950s, a couple years after this, but close enough, um, they were producing four times as many dolls as the Katie Cruza Company in the West was. So, you know, I'm not sure why this didn't take off, but if it had taken off, there would be hundreds of them. Um, and the Doll 15 was dropped from the Katie Cruza line around 1945. In 
2005, it was brought back as an exclusive for the K2 Cruza Family Club. This doll is not hard to find, shows up fairly often. Um, instead of being stuffed with K-Pock, it's stuffed with wool, and it has the Giacomo face. Um, so this is something to look for if you would like to have one of these dolls at a little, you know, <laughs> better price than one of the originals. And in 2013, they reintroduced the doll again. Now, I have to say, I've never seen one of these dolls. Um, it's much harder to find than the Club Edition doll. Um, it's also stuffed with wool, and it's unclear if the head is a mask on this or if, in fact, the head, which in this case is a doll one head, but it's unclear if it isn't a complete head. Um, clearly the bonnet is not sewn on. So that leads me to believe that in this case, it probably is the body of the doll 15 with a traditional doll one head sewn onto it, as opposed to having the um, sort of stitched on cap version of the head with the mask face. So. Anyway, as I said, this is going to be a short program. This is all I have to say about these dolls um, because they are so hard to find. And I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy the rest of the convention.